What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Unscreen Live. I'm Andrew Jupin, and this is the show for Monday, March the 18th. Happy uh, recovering from St. Patrick's Day. If you were uh, getting nuts this weekend, hope you're not uh, feeling it today. Um, but we got a lot to get to today, a lot to get to today. I'm uh, going to bring in my buds here. First up, you know him, you love him. He was at a museum yesterday, Mr. Steven Zadak. Well, I was at a museum yesterday, and I'd like everybody to know it. Um, <laughs> no, just I, I, it's a fun shirt. I liked it. Oh, uh, yeah, it, it was at the Biennial yesterday. Really cool. Really fun stuff. Biennial's always a good time. Mm -hmm. um, let's see here. Someone who, uh, I don't know if he's ever been to a museum in his life. No, that's not true. Eric Siska. <laughs> yeah, well, once, that one time, they took me to the big city, the <laughs> Monpa put me on the back of the carriage and we went in oh my yeah. god biennial huh yeah I mean, was... they do paintings and sculptures yes it is, it's kind of Both it's everything. Yeah. i always feel weird about um the video installation because almost no one the video installation is usually like a, kind of a documentary that's running yeah. And you kind of just walk in and you walk out. Like no one stays for the whole thing. Like no. it's not it's not time to say like guys, the new one's starting. So it's it's very yeah. bizarre how those work. I mean, I, like some of them are like a dude like carrying this was uh, kind of cool, and a guy a, a guy like carrying a long sheet up like uh rock stairs into a waterfall. That's like fine, like you know what I mean? But sure. others oh, are like yeah. This genocide that's going on, I'm like, well, I don't know what genocide this is, baby. I just showed up. <laughs> they it's got hard. another genocide video thing going this year. Yeah. They had that like last year, I think. Yeah, there's, there's, always, there's always a lot of genocide. So hard to keep track of all <laughs> the genocides. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure it's a different genocide altogether. Don't worry yeah. about it. Uh, and finally, you know him, you love him. He's the man who will push his car needle well below empty, Mr. Chris Cavan. Of course, I <laughs> never particularly liked Chad Lowe. I never liked the idea that you would just coast off your brother's fame. I always found that so disgusting that he would do that to <laughs> Rob, a friend of mine who I love very much. He has done some great work out there and is not creepy at all. I must <laughs> underline that. Uh, but Chad Lowe and his whole thing about being in bad horror movies and bad mm. rom-coms and looking not at all like his handsome brother really, really pissed me off the end. Oh, wow. The end. Oh, wow. Chris. Wow, the end. The wow. We finally got to the end of one of them. That's nice incredible. Ending. Now, Chris, do you need to uh, screen cap that to send that to your account so that you can uh, put that book off your taxes? Does that need to happen? <laughs> uh, that one's already been written off, Steve. Oh, That's, nice. That, 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 many, many years. Yeah, so, like, oh, see, visual evidence, visual yeah. evidence right off. Chris, you've been mentioning Chad Lowe quite often lately. <laughs> um, I have been. Have you been going through the filmography, the oeuvre? I, watched, I, I forget what name of it. it was uh it just came on and i like was like 15 minutes into it i'll look it up it, it seems to be the one that everybody knows him for mm -hmm. um well he's just a tv guy right well he was was he, he, was in was he getting into softcore was that him? oh i hope so well his brother see. got into fucking well, uh, non yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, no, yeah. no 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 i, I don't want to uh, look through that video library uh-huh um, no. Hey, big ups to everybody uh, joining us in the chat today. Of course, we got Fortune's Daughter, uh, shoddy content. I like that. Asian Badger, Will Plock, Carlisle Commons, Busiris. Let's see, we got someone here. Oh. Vicky. Yes, yeah, her birthday. Uh, they're I making think. it live. Happy birthday, Vicky. There Look you at go. that. See, I got you, Steve. Don't worry about it. I saw Let's... it too. There it Happy is. Happy birthday. Woo! Look, at that. Look at that. Busiris, March 18th. 87. My Nick favorite. B, yay LA, oh yeah, welcome, oh. and by the way, if you're just getting here, folks, mm. be sure before we go any further, like and subscribe to this channel, like mm. this video, subscribe to this channel, hit them alerts, you want to know when we are going live or uh, adding additional content to this lovely, lovely YouTube channel. Oh, and also mm -hmm. a PayPal me six dollars. Yeah. By the way, it looks like Chad Lowe was in Unfaithful 2002. He was, wow. The one oh. I'm thinking of is Highway to Hell. Uh, uh, which is why, if anybody, is it the uh, Gilbert movie? I think. So. Let me. Gilbert plays Hitler. Hitler. In yeah. In yeah. Yeah, 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 we yeah, actually yeah, yeah. talked yes. to Gilbert Gottfried about that it, in our long ago interview with Gilbert Gottfried. Go look that up, folks. It's it was a fun crazy, convo. Crazy movie, and I, I had also, I, I guess, I had gone on a little bit of a Chad Lowe jag there because I'd also mm -hmm. watched. Toby Hooper did a TV movie with him called The Apartment Complex that I okay. had recently watched. Is horrible. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, you don't I say. Yes, I've had him on the mind. I've had him on the mind, Eric. Oh, yes. Did you watch Pretty Little Liars, 81 episodes with Chad Lowe? Ooh, I did not. I, <laughs> I missed that one. 
Uh, it's, it, I'm gonna guess Chadlow's like a parent who's kind of like on the periphery. If I if I'm remembering what that show's kind of about in general, or little or lying, <laughs> he might be one. I bet he's a liar, Eric. That's a, he sounds Dad. like a liar of those he's three. A, that's Dad Holly, liar. Hollywood for you. They're all liars. Mm -hmm. Hey, so speaking of Hollywood, we got some birthdays today. First up, remembering him. On what would have been his 98th birthday, Mr. Peter Graves, of course, from Airplane and Mission Impossible. And That's Biography. Yes. He's, he was the voice of <laughs> Biography. Really? Yeah. The uh, rest of these folks are still kicking. Brad Dourif turns 74. This is Brad Dourif oh. picture from Child's Play where he looks like Tommy Wiseau. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fucking great. Handsome. Uh, let's see. Vanessa Williams turns 61. Uh, one of the best to ever do it. Queen Latifah turns 54. Uh, someone who's also in the entertainment industry, Dane Cook, oh. <laughs> turns 53. Happy and his birthday. girlfriend just turned 19. Yay. Oh, great. oh, wow. Steve oh, stole nice. my joke when I was about to say, and coming in next, she's about 20 years too young on her 35th birthday, no. Lily Collins. <laughs> Happy birthday to Lily Collins as well. Yes, indeed. Dane Cook likes him young. Uh, likes well, him hey, legal, but likes him young. God, God, come on, guys. But he's so funny. You know what? It, 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 find the balance here, all right? Talent, you got to look at talent. And that talent is just uh, indescribable. Wait, why would you put Vanessa Williams in the middle when you should save the best for last? Oh, ooh, ooh. Excellent. You're totally right. Usually I just go in descending age order, but I should have changed it up for that, Steve. Uh, shit, guys, we got a lot to get to today. Um, kind of some surprises. Some ooh. surprises, I should say around the box office but let's uh let's start there shall we we'll take a look at the numbers this is highest gross now i gotta tell you city of boston really let down the box office this week we'll get to that in a second uh mm -hmm. first up at five cabrini I know Still. everybody wanted to know Ooh. what was happening with Cabrini, and I'll tell you what, a, uh, an almost Quantum Mania-esque fall of 61% uh. for last week, uh, so this will unfortunately not be the next Jim Caviezel well. Angel Studios hit. Well, I think everyone that uh, that thought that they were getting pasta finally realized that it was a movie, and they're like, yeah. "Oh yeah. no, I don't, I don't want the Cabrini then. Don't, don't, no, no. don't give me the Cabrini." I thought it was strange I had to pick up this pasta at the movie theater. What was I thinking? <laughs> oh, I guess we're not we're gonna be denied a, like a nun biopic expanded uh, universe lover. type of thing. That's too well, bad. I mean, the nun stuff is out of control, though, dude. We got this. We got that. The Sydney Sweeney movie's coming out uh, this coming what is, Friday. What is that? What, what uh, is she that? Immaculate she is immaculately conceived, yeah. but it might be b -b -b by the devil. What? The yeah. 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 Uh, oh. I saw somebody said um, we had the uh, the Verhoeven movie already a few years ago. Benedetta. Benedetta. It was it basically I, this. I think is if this catches on, calling mm. this movie Benedetta Light, that might be a problem <laughs> for it. Benedetta uh, rocks, dude. It's Love a that. great movie. No, no, no. But apparently this is sort of like non-sploitation without the oh. sex part of it. Those two nun movies came out and they're boring as shit and they're about nuns. So like I guess it is a thing now. Just like uh, hey, yeah. scary nuns. Saint Maud also uh by the Great Rose Glass. That's good, yeah, that's uh, a good movie. Uh, yeah. a good that's one, yeah. a good movie. Yeah, I actually that. just think it's apropos of us talking about um Love Lies Bleeding last week yeah. for a little bit. Uh, I just went and watched St. Maud. Uh, fucking great movie. Yeah. yeah. Really, really had a good time with it. Uh, I'm trying to find... There we go. Okay. One of my... Guys, it was, gonna, it was about to be a huge fucking emergency. One of my pieces of poster art didn't upload. Oh, and, my oh, God. Oh, no. I was going to have to throw the stream in the garbage. I was uh, going anyway. to it if that happens. <laughs> He's that will to eventually oh, happen to you, dude. I like, you hope know. so. I would be remembered forever. Fine. You would have to, <laughs> would have to buy a gun first. That's you know. Steps yeah, here. I guess this weekend I'll go shopping. Okay. Uh, you might have to buy a gun if in your house is a haunted teddy bear, imaginary, in at number four. Uh, you know, whatever. It lost about forty five percent. It's I didn't okay. see it. Would bullets stop this creature though? No, it would, it would not. Become, it would not. Okay. Oh no, He's it would not. I, I can say. 
He's a psychopathic imaginary teddy bear, but so what? <laughs> <laughs> the opinion of many people in this movie. <laughs> Uh, yeah, another 5.3 million with 11 million budget. This will uh, round the corner probably next week. It'll be totally fine, as you know, most horror is. Um, speaking of horror, though, <laughs> in at number three, Mark Wahlberg's back in theaters wow. with Arthur the King. And unfortunately, <laughs> the, ca- the Catholics did not show up for this one. Yeah. 7.5 million. Oh, uh, for Cab- this guy. Cabrini was like taking the fuel out of the tank, maybe. Yeah, true. Yeah. That's right. Problem right there. I look at so many movies on the weekend, I guess. What um, the fuck's going on with Cabrini? She's taking all my shit. Fucking <laughs> nun. That fucking nun, bro. Can you believe it? I've been praying my ass off, and then this nun just shows up out of nowhere, steals from my dog movie. So the fuck's the point of staying prayed up if I ain't going to be number one at the box office? Is the dog religious in the movie? <laughs> I don't Maybe. think so. Like, I, no dog. I don't know. I've seen that trailer a bunch, and it's like, what are we doing to that dog? Is that dog going to make it? I don't think I can handle it if it doesn't. That's why a great resource, dude, because I'm right there with you. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> does the dog die dot com. Got it. That's yeah. really a website. Yes. Yeah. And you're OK watching Arthur the King if you want to get silly with it later. The dog is OK. Apparently, this leans way more like feel good, family friendly, yeah. like oh, that's it's him and the dog tough. and this like amazing race type thing or got whatever. It. I yeah, wanted yeah. the dog to die. <laughs> well, you got to go see one of those dogs purpose movies then, Eric, because a that's, dog's purpose yep. is to die. Right. Is they, throw, <laughs> they, they throw him in the lake or something. Uh, right? Yeah. yeah just just Dennis Quaid. Dogs are for drowning. Praise <laughs> Jesus. Dennis Quaid. A uh, um, couple of things about this, though. So this movie, Mark Wahlberg, back in theaters, after uh, four of his last seven movies went to mm. streaming. So wow, in theaters, okay. of his last seven movies, not counting this one, in theaters was Joe Bell, Uncharted, and yeah. Father Stu. Mm. And then on the streaming side, I mean, these movies, man, uh, Infinite, which we did a, we an episode yeah. on. Uh-huh. Um, me something called me time. Nope. Yes, Am- with Kevin Hart. I'm jerking off. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, me time was the Kevin Hart one you're saying. Yeah. I remember yeah. vaguely that coming out. Family plan previous episode and Ooh. Spencer Confidential all streaming. So this yeah. was Mark's return to theaters and uh, not too great. This was even below the predicted tracking, which brings me to our patron poll from this weekend. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, congratulations to everyone uh, who was correct, saying that pre- underperforming this movie, ten a million dollars or under. Uh, I don't know what eleven percent of you were thinking. Over fifteen million. I don't mm. know about that. You, know, I mean, you never fans. know. The Christians, though, it's it's, it's a decent gamble. That's true. true. We true. have listeners in Boston too. I do know that. <laughs> uh, so I mean, I the the thing with this one is it does feel. I haven't seen it yet. Cameron didn't want to go to the movies this week. Uh, and uh, he, I, 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 this feels like something they shot like years ago. Yeah, like yeah. this just uh-huh. doesn't. It, it, he doesn't even look like he looks so now. You're suggesting perhaps the dog has died of natural causes. <laughs> I do, that was my point. I was going to get to that point eventually, but yes. I wish uh, my co-star Scruffles could be on the red carpet with me, but uh, <laughs> this movie was shot 14 years ago. <laughs> Why is that age? Why is everybody talking about that bullshit, messy? Why ain't they talking about Leonard here who did the real work? He's That's the true. Yeah, this dog, I guarantee you, in this in this Wahlberg movie is no messy. That's no for way. sure. Bullshit. Can you fake throw up? Huh, Leonard? Can you do that? <laughs> Tell me. I can, bro. Uh anyway, um, in it two. Dune mm. two still rocking and rolling another. $29.1 million in its love third that. week. Uh, love to see it happening. This now, let's see, uh, what were we looking at here? $104 million of this movie's gross is exclusively IMAX tickets. That's bonkers. And I was looking because I'm was i getting that itch. I'm like, can we go see Dune in 70 millimeter IMAX again? Uh, so I was looking at Showtime's. Um, and at Lincoln Square with the IMAX 70 millimeter, it's like oppy level showtimes. Like shit is just sold out yeah. all throughout the day for like the entire they, week. It's you got to go crazy. to that Kips Bay, dude. It's a secret movie theater. <laughs> Make more IMAX screens. Yes. Do the mm-hmm. full things, right? There's demand for it, but you can't see it. No, that's well, why also, I go to the Lincoln Square one also because it's yes. the only like legitimate IMAX. Yeah. The other ones are like, Big. They got it's the IMAX screen. logo on it, but it's a big. It's not the same exact auditorium. Right, no. 
No, it's not at all. And like, that's why that place is always going to be sold out. And like, there's only what, like yeah. five of those things across the country. There's so a very talking, few of those things. There's Shit about very few. Kip's Bay. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> Steve. As you were last week also. It's a terrible <laughs> movie theater. It's a fine theater. I actually I'm like the exists. Kip's Bay I, theater. I, 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 had no, I had no idea it had an IMAX or faux yeah. IMAX screen. Yeah, it's, it's a faux IMAX. But it's, it's a big screen. It's a pretty very big, big screen. It's a big screen. I mean, that's where uh, we all got wasted and watched Friday the 13th mm -hmm. Part 9. I fell yeah. asleep in the wrong chair. Um, so no surprises here, of course. Number one, Kung Fu Panda 4 still rocking and rolling. Another astounding 30 million dollars yep this is going to be in the top 10 of the box office for the remainder of the year he guaranteed that. he believes that yeah. mm -hmm. he does believe that um have you become a big fan since we uh, uh no i, I okay. know nothing about it okay <laughs> uh people like it i guess this movie this one um 85 million dollar budget half the budget of the previous installments which again brings me back I will never stop thinking about Elemental and the yeah, money wasted yeah. on that movie. And I know, like, yeah, yeah, delays, strikes, whatever. But fuck, man, two hundred million dollars versus thirty-eight or that eighty-five? Excuse me. I mean, even still, good lord. How folks. much did Food Fight cost? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you had to pay people to give you the thing to watch it, God, 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 God. Uh, or they had to pay you to watch it. Rather, need Food Fight, I mean, honestly, what was the? What do you think? Like, let's be real. The, that animation, the year it was made. Mm. What do you think Food Fight actually cost? A million. Now, Steve's got me curious. A well, million I mean, with the with the cast, maybe just it, hiring people. But they had right. to double it because remember they lost all the animation. Yeah. They had to do it all over again. Oh right, someone threw out the hard drive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it probably looked five. worse. The original yes. probably looked worse. Can you imagine like someone having to go to like I don't know, whoever the fuck John Lasseter and be like, uh, I lost all of Wally. -E. I <laughs> yes. just. The fucking the hard drive got put in the garbage. The garbage truck already came. Wally is gone. We have to do Wally over again. Good, that's where it belongs. Get it in that garbage truck. What? Get out of town. You don't like Wally? It's fine. I was Heartless. just saying something. Really. I think, what, I think the, the how uh, how you make how do you train your dragon? People are doing Wally again this summer. For I saw a trailer for a new robot uh, animated movie, and I was like, we can't be doing it. There, By the oh, way, we've been doing right? it. Yeah. Guys, Wikipedia has the food fight budget at between forty-five and sixty-five million dollars. Yes, uh -huh. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, no, that's impossible. Again, I they had to so. do it twice. They had to do the animation twice. Yeah, well, I how are those jerk that. offs getting forty million dollars? Come on, I, the people are just pocketing shit. I think you know. We got to start out like okay, like someone get a note out to Christopher Lloyd. How much did you get paid to play that like cartoon Nazi thing <laughs> yeah. in food fight? We what was got, going on guys, there? I think we could we can make a bunch of money here by making like a fake animated movie, like a really low rent animated movie like yep. this. And then you just yep. get Chris Catan to say one line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the rest of it can be us. He's top of the poster then. Chris Catan. Yes. Yeah. And th we'll, th we'll rake it in. We'll rake it in. Even if, even if we don't, even if it's not successful, we'll still have made tons of money because we'll just, you know, we'll just say, yeah, we need all that money. Right, 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 right. <laughs> Um, and then, uh, real quick, uh, didn't make the top five, but was damn close. So, uh, elsewhere around the box office, Love Lies Bleeding, yeah, uh, came in at number six in week two. It expanded to, uh, from five screens to 1,362 screens. So, two and a half mil, not terrible, not uh, great. Uh, yeah. but uh, Eric and Steve, you saw it over the weekend. Uh, yes, follow up thoughts, go see it, people. It was really, really good. I think yeah, it's it's great. It's got like a real '90s noir vibe to it that I really enjoy. But also like the the uh, which I'll say uh, without spoiling anything, the sort of uh, dreamy elements that sort of uh, merge in towards the yep. middle and the end of that movie there are really impactful and really cool. And I think it's really like it 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 elevate like it's a great movie. And then like that stuff starts happening. Like, oh wow, this is an awesome awesome movie. And I think yes, Katie, it's a star-making performance by Katie O'Brien. She's amazing in the movie, as is Kay Stu, uh, uh, fantastic. Finally, Kay, Kristen Stewart with the uh, motivation to be incredibly horny makes so much sense for like her mannerisms and her open mouth for the most part. It's like, yeah, oh, yeah, she's yeah. just horny. Oh, okay. Which was like that also, makes sense. <laughs> she was great in uh, Crimes of the Future also because yes. she was playing a horny character. Exactly. And I I love her. I love Katie O'Brien. I think you you you're exactly right on, on what you said about this film. Yeah. 
uh, a friend of mine uh, who works for A24, I sent her a note and I was like, hey, Love Lies Bleeding, fucking great, you know. Uh, everybody was great in it. I made some comment about like Ed Harris and the Scullet. Mm -hmm. She gets me back and she's like, Ed Harris in that movie looks exactly like K Stu's actual father. <laughs> and she sent me a fucking like paparazzi photo of them just like uh. walking somewhere. He's got he's got a hat on in the photo I saw, so I don't know if it's a Scullet, but wow. it is. It's like the long blonde hair. He's just like a skinny dude. Doesn't look like an evil man or anything. No, like sure. Like like the dude yeah. looks exact. It's fucking weird. The hookup you have, you're getting daddy pics. You're not telling <laughs> us. <laughs> it, this was it was a public daddy pic, dude. That wasn't uh, <laughs> daddy out in public. Yeah, you can it go find Mark from the archives. I yeah. took my daddy out in public. That would be uh, might be a fun, that would might be a fun like weirdo best supporting nom for him if he just finds because he's so good in that movie. Oh yeah, absolutely. When, when things get oh, tits yeah. up and he starts uh, smashing up his house, I won't say what he does, but I was like, yeah, do it. Yep. Uh, what he's I love that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, now I'm just obsessed with uh, finding this fucking photo. You're gonna find. Uh, you're trying to find the daddy pic. I'm trying to find the daddy pic. You're yes. gonna display the daddy for all the fine folks here on YouTube. Mm. Yes, I'm trying to. Okay, uh, that's that's. I'll uh, keep exactly. Right. I'll keep uh, vamping until you <laughs> yeah. find that. So we're, we're coming up Thank soon Daddy on the program. <laughs> Daddies. <laughs> Daddies, here it's it's coming in hot. Um, yeah, you know, another everybody's talking about the skullet, by the way. But what did you guys think of Dave Franco's Rat Tail? It was great. I was well, I was afraid. I was nasty. I, I think that movie because Kristen Stewart is so cool looking. I think the mullet's coming back in a big way. I think this movie this movie might tip the mullet back. I uh, think like movies based I mean, set in eighty nine or something are coming back. Like uh, yes. Bones and All, I think was also the same yeah. era. Uh, oh yeah, you're right. Cool. All End right, here we 80s. go. I got it. You guys ready for this? Dad incoming. This is this is K Stu and her old man. Look at that guy. Oh wow. my god! Yeah. Okay. See? Yeah. It's insane. Sadly, the Ed Harris villain is dressed so much better than that dude. Like, you know, yes, that is. <laughs> you want to go uh, minimal. You want to go with less stuff there. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what you got on there, brother. So we're uh, getting a head start on Father's Day. If everyone in the chat could send in <laughs> pictures of their dad, daddies. Oh, daddy pictures. Yeah, it's, it's a daddy mm -hmm. show. <laughs> it's a daddy show. It sure is. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so that's the box office. Uh, we'll see what happens this week uh, because you know it. Ghostbusters Frozen Dinners coming out. Oh, Jesus. Uh, oh, it is? Oh, Jesus. Okay. Yeah, it just 20 looks, second, man. It looks terrible. It, it looks certainly bad. does. It uh, certainly I does. I have that, not man. seen what the um the forecasts are for it yet, but based off of that trailer, man, it just looks like again, not for the four people on this broadcast, at least. When uh, people kept saying, Oh, Frozen Empire's coming out, I'm like, that's a Jurassic World thing or something. Yeah, Why it's is actually that it's the, it's Ilsa and the other girl from Frozen, and they go Ooh. to Jurassic World. I love that. And like, they have to use their ice magic against dinosaurs. That'd be cool. I, I know this because like um uh just people that I know like off of my like that I went to high school with and whatever, like a real uh -huh. ghostbusters heads, people are my age, and like I never like had like hero worship for the Ghostbusters. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. it was yeah. a fun and funny movie, and the cartoons were fun and funny, and it was like you know cool to watch and like blah blah blah. But like they're like, oh man, the, the, for the best to ever do it, Spangler. You know what I mean? Like that kind of <laughs> hero shit. I yeah. never understood. Like so, putting that, putting the so not like the movie, but like the characters. Yes, the characters on a on an Indiana Jones esque pedestal. You're yes, saying? exactly. And like like, the, like in the pantheon of great movie heroes. Heroes? Yes, yeah. exactly. That's it's, the craziest fucking thing I've ever heard. It's a comedy. Life. It's like Caddy Shack with ghosts. Comedy. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's really, that's yeah. really weird, Steve, man. This I would is a never great think point, that. Though. We need to have like a very self serious Caddy Shack <laughs> revival. <Yeah. laughs> like we get like a ghost CGI of Rodney to be in it. Yeah. You know? And it's like the son of Chevy Chase. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Presume they'll kill that character. And it's uh, like, oh my God, you're inheriting the old golf course. Oh my God, let's dust it off. Oh, dude, ooh, yeah. It's like, oh, it's like a, this like, or orchestra swells. Fall. I'm all right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Leaves Ain't falling. Leaves falling. Me. Leaves falling on the grass. And yes. then the, the camera kind of turns and it just, it's. <laughs> 
Bushwood. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You get Anthony Hopkins. The great. You get Anthony Hopkins to play uh, Ted Knight's uh, uh, grandson. Yes. Yes. Or, or nephew, a, whatever the guy big, was. Known. In the trailer, you definitely need the bronze statue of Ted Knight, though. Yeah. Yes. Looking imperious. Yeah, yep. yeah, very much. And a car's got to crash into it, and the head falls <laughs> off, and. Is- <laughs> It's fake sucking someone's uh, dick. You're missing that. That's Delho Elliott you're mixing that up with. Oh, that's <laughs> Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. You're right. Once, Fuck, once you get the release date, once you get to black, you will get a creepy voice saying, well, we're waiting. <laughs> <laughs> yes! 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 You might as well, so dumb. You yes. might as well make this movie. You mm-hmm. might as well make it. Because it's really, I mean, that's what you think about Caddyshack. Just like Ghostbusters. It's all about the family we make along <laughs> yes. the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We love talking about found families now and made families. Mm-hmm. Ghostbusters, it's just the family we made along the way. Sure. What dog yeah. shit. What utter dog. I'm sorry. What utter dog shit. It's okay I to do. like a movie. If that's your if that's your thing, it's totally fine. I mean, God knows I like garbage. Very true. Uh, so, like I said, all we know about Frozen Empire is from the trailer. And you learn a lot from trailers, folks, so who knows? But speaking of which, we got one coming up that I, I'm i feeling a little nervous about. I don't know what's going on here, because this one is a movie. It's a remake of a movie we all enjoy. Uh, so I, I don't know. But let's take a look. This is trailer segment. Here it is, folks. The Crow. So it's a remake. It's not just a because I mean I know the Crow can be anybody, but this is Eric Draven again. We're doing. He's, he yes. is playing Eric Draven. Yeah. So it's like, you know what I mean? Yeah. You want, you yeah, want a new? Exactly. You want a new guy? Yeah. Why not? Just you, know, well, just, you, you just don't want Eric to be cool anymore. I, <laughs> mm-hmm. I see what this is. I uh, yeah. I mean I don't know. It's I've I've only seen screen caps. Is anyone cool directing this? I have not really even di- dug in here. Um, I have no idea, but uh, Danny Houston's in it, so you know yeah, it's a movie. I guess you know somebody passed. Yeah, <laughs> it was hopping around for a while. I forgot who actually got it. Let's see, uh, uh, Rupert, Rupert Sanders. Sanders. That's a fake oh, name. That's no. an alias of some kind. Is that the um, Snow White, Snow White, White in the Huntsman? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. And oh, Ghost in the Shell. Speaking, speaking of case two, exactly. He broke up that. He cheated on. He, she cheated on Robert Pattinson like a dog. Indeed, indeed. Yes. Oh, what on Snow White and the Huntsman? Yes, with she, him, with Rupert Sanders. Yes. Yeah. While they were doing it together, and and oh. that was where fucking Trump. Donald Trump's uh uh like a dog uh thing yes. came from. It was from he got, he got really Robert. offended by that, and he was just yeah, like, like Robert Pattinson could do so much better than that. Little piece of trash. It's so cool that he was invested in that. I know. It's a little gossip, man. That was what he should have been. That's what he should have done. Something tells me, I don't know. Something tells me that guy's got the wrong things on his mind. Yeah, Yeah. you're right. right. You might be right. (laughs) Uh, All right, so this is the new one. This is Bill Skarsgård is now playing Eric Draven Mm -hmm. and FKA Twigs. She's still doing that. Uh, that is, uh, I guess the lady friend, the girlfriend that also gets killed. And I'm going to guess Danny Houston's the villain. (laughs) One of them, at least. Yes, I would think so. Uh, but man, do you think someone's going to say anything about Devil's Night? Be they their be- favorite holiday. They fucking better. <laughs> uh, all right, so folks at home, in the episode description here, we do have a link uh, to this uh, Crow trailer here. This is out from Lionsgate Films. Lionsgate having a, I don't know, a big year, but I'll say they have a, a big slate of movies this year, but it's coming out wide on June the 7th, so not too much longer to wait uh, until this reboot hits all right you guys ready over there Mm -hmm. sure all right the continuing or i guess rebooted adventures of eric draven the crow in three two one go that's a crow Mm. (laughs) he's got like joker-esque tattoos in this movie. yeah and what is the squid game they're in here (laughs) i'm gonna guess they're both like you know from prison maybe part of the suicide squad yeah yep Looks like we could be getting uh, getting a little sexy here. That's something. Yeah. Oh, more supernatural powers, eh? Up. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, mm-hmm. Was it Eric and Shelley in the in the original movie? Was I think so. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, it Eric sounded Shelley. familiar. Oh man, suffocating this time, huh? Wow. 
I'm glad I get to see this movie. So <laughs> I, mean, I, don't, I don't even have to watch a movie. I can see. I, I'm yeah, this is the right whole here. thing, man. Right? Yeah. There you go. Oh, they're dead already. Not, okay. Not to, be a, back. not to be a total jerk, but how many times did the weapons master check the guns every time that they were using? Oh, it you know what? I, I listen. I'm sure, dude. It was <laughs> discussed. <laughs> it's like, like four to five. Like, it's like, all right, everybody, we're all fucking thinking it. All right. <laughs> you know. What is this song, Chris? I don't know. And why Ozzy, is it? Even... Oh, there he goes. But he's oh, it's not... Ozzy? Yeah, that's Ozzy. It's okay. terrible. That... It, it, it... Retire. I'm, sure, I'm not even sure if it's a cover. It sounds like it's the song, but remixed with big fucking Phil yes. Collins drums over it. Pardon <laughs> me. Where is the white makeup, ladies and gentlemen? What the fuck it's are you doing here? Act, the tattoos ooh, do it. Ooh, headshot. Like that, that was pretty great. They are, yeah, that's. Sitting alone in an auditorium, Danny Houston, you're the villain. Did, did the right did the did the original uh, Eric Draven have a bunch of shitty Pete Davidson tattoos or just no, he, did not. Not. he did not. <laughs> he was he a was rock not. and roller though, a grunge right. rock and roller. That's yeah. true. And so far, um, this is not Interstate Love Song by, or this is not Plush by Stuntable <laughs> Pilot. So therefore, this soundtrack is lesser than that yep. original soundtrack is great. It's oh, one of the one of yeah. the best fucking soundtracks of the '90s. Absolutely. Oh, so he's just got Batman eye makeup now. Uh -huh. He's gonna get the white makeup in the last few yeah, seconds of the totally movie. Right. right, you're totally right, dude. You know Ugh. what? If that's the case, just make it be like the Batman eye makeup, and that's it. Yeah. Don't don't do that. Oh, that's pretty fucking sweet. That's I'm pretty fucking sweet. I mean, I've seen the whole movie good. though. That's pretty fun. Yeah, that's nice. We're done. Ooh. Uh, this soundtrack could be the opposite of the original soundtrack. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Holy yep. crap! Oh that was a holy crow. That would have been appropriate too. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, whatever. I'll be at the theater, but like, what are we doing? Yeah. Like, you don't have to change it that much. There's already been other crow movies, some of which people like. Don't people like Crow City of Angels? Isn't that supposed to be like a so-so? It's fine. I mean, Something like, or other. It, yeah, it has a, a good soundtrack again, but like, uh, uh, yeah, I mean, people are fine with that. The third one's the one where like r only diehards are really keeping is that it. is that Eddie Furlong? I think so. And David, and Davey think... Boreas. Yeah, we got to figure out. We might be doing a crow movie to coincide. Maybe. I think we want to oh. do the one that's even worse. Whatever one is even worse is the one to do. You it. get Iggy Pop begging for his life in the second one, which is pretty fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Like that. Uh, Okay. That's great. The third one is Salvation from 2000, starring Eric Maybe Mabius. Yeah. Oh, him. Okay. Oh, Eric Mabius. Yeah, he he's in something we've talked about is, over the years. Is that is he ugly Betty guy? He is ugly Betty guy. He's yeah, he okay. is Mabius because it's like maybe no no. And the <laughs> fifth is Furlong from 2005. Wow. Fifth. Oh, fifth. Wow. We'll have to look into this. I thought there were like three. I think yeah. Chris. Oh, sorry, fourth. The fourth. One? The, fifth, the fifth is this new one. So. Oh, okay. 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 Still four fucking crow movies, three of which are direct to DVD sequels. Mm -hmm. Or did that second one? That Maybe second one probably came out. And, got, yeah. That got yeah, yeah, released. That was actual that was an actual movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, Busiris uh, has my back here. Eric Mabius is in. Resident oh yeah, Evil. yeah, he yeah, is. Yeah. Um. Uh. So yeah, I don't know here. Um. Oh, this is very funny. Sorry, Tara. There's too much counting crows. I like that. Crow Thanks. sequels. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I'll be at the theater, but it looks like uh, it's a pretty ill-advised remake. But you know what's not ill-advised, folks? Seeing us on the road because we put on one hell of a show and we're going on tour starting next month. We're going to be in Hot Lana mm -hmm. talking Gerard Butler in Gamer. This is... Uh, a die in the game, die for real kind of bullshit movie with Michael sure. C. Hall, and the oh, yeah. penal system is involved. It's oh, yeah. really, really, oh, it's shit. a very it's heady a film, baby. Yeah, yeah. we're oh, gonna take out our penals in Atlanta uh, Thursday, April twenty fifth. Uh, I'm stoked that we're playing a city winery. Uh, we have a good time when we play city yes, wineries. We We've played them before. And I'll tell you what, guaranteed, the city winery is not going to smell like the place in Atlanta last time, six no. years ago, because that was dead mozzarella sticks. I don't know how dead mozzarella sticks <laughs> became a thing, but like mm -hmm. they were mozzarella sticks, but deceased. Uh, it, it, the and smell in that place. 
Atlanta update. Those meet and greet tickets are almost almost Ooh, sold okay. out. Ooh. So right. you want to do that, folks? That. We we love a good meet and greet. We love taking pictures. We love hearing from folks. Uh, sometimes there's uh, you know gifts and whatnot or signing things. It's a lot of fun getting to hang out and uh, meet some of you fine folk who came out. Uh, so yeah, don't uh, don't slouch on that. Uh, and then in May, we got two dates. It's going to be real cool, making our Space City debut. That's right, Houston, Texas, playing the Houston Improv to talk about uh, uh, what I will say is a very fun, very fun sequel, RoboCop 2. I yes. know that I've seen this movie, but my brain doesn't recognize it. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. This does not compute, creep. Mm -hmm. The first is the best, but this expands the universe with Nuke. I love Nuke. I, as a kid, I always wanted to get into drugs so I could do Nuke. But that's it. not real. Sad. No, not sad. I'm sorry. We got to make that drug. Chris, get in the lab. Okay. <laughs> Back to the lab with you, Chris. Sure, uh, fine. Yeah, so that's going to be great. We'll be at the Houston Improv for that. And then the very next night, we're uh, going over to Austin, Texas. We're going to be at Cap City Comedy, folks. And we're going to be talking from dusk till dawn. That's right. The Robert Rodriguez Stone Cold Classic. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're not, you, you're not you saying both. it, Steve? You're not dark doing it. Night. There, there we go. go. Thank I you. I was waiting for do it. Do both. Both shows. You. Yeah. We are going to be driving into Austin from Houston. So why don't you do the same? Yes. Maybe you'll see us on the road. Run us off the road. Follow us. <laughs> do mm. what you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do what you want. <laughs> oh my God. What does that mean? <laughs> no. It's then it turns into a. Show a me your oh, daddy. You know. Show Ford, me your daddy. Uh, maybe it would. Would it be a four-person crow situation if we all got murdered, or maybe one of us would be the crow to avenge the other three? It has to be one. One would one be the One for the crow. three, yeah. There's yeah, only yeah, one I mean, named Eric. So yeah, it's not me. You're, you're, I, I would, if, I, if you wanted to get some avenging done, I'd, I'd put my money on Eric. You, you're tall, I dude. will you avenge know, all you, these guys yeah, except yeah. for Steve because of what he said on our Fugitive <laughs> episode. <laughs> I think uh, the person that uh, we might need to be avenged against is this guy. I don't no, know. Yeah. I, I, don't know <laughs> I don't know what he's up to. That's that was, I don't know. Podcast just run off the ground. Wow. <laughs> Man, that's Slender Daddy right there. Look at that guy. <laughs> uh, all right, y'all. Let's get into it on screen. We have watched something uh, oh. in release. We're talking late night with the devil from IFC and Shudder. Directed by Colin and Cameron Cairns. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah, this movie. It's good. It's good, folks. Three days later, this movie got under my skin. Uh, it yes. literally, like, yeah. not, not in the, like, oh, fuck the world, you know, but, like, just, like, in a kind of Prince of Darkness kind of way where you're, like, it's, yeah, okay. it's, like, apocalyptic and creepy and weird. And, like, I, it just kind of got under my skin in, in all the good ways that I really enjoyed. Yes. Oh, yeah, I mean, they, we we do. We, they, it, yeah. it, it gets into so many facets. I'm not. I'm not trying to spoil anything, but like different elements of like horror and cult stuff yep. are involved. I love the premise, obviously, of a late night talk show, and uh, very very cool production design. Very cool, yes. costumes and uh, the night owls with uh, Jack yes. Delroy's is Jack what it's Delroy, called. Maybe. I it's want like cool a movie. Night Owls with Jack yep. Delroy like logo T-shirt. Yes. I will totally fucking wear that I'm, thing. I'm sure Kevin IFC will say? have. Yeah. So, I'm sure IFC has will have something like that at some point. I hope so at least. Yeah. Uh, I, I I really liked this. Uh, I've liked. Uh, I, I'm trying to remember the last movie this uh, team did, but I really I liked that one as well. The Australian Brothers, I believe, is the idea. Yes. Yeah. And I'm, I'm just completely blank. But the one yep. before this was also very strong. Mm -hmm. uh, and this builds on that. Uh, my. I, my only issue with it at all is I kind of just want it to be the show. Yeah, no, that's, that's my I, issue. Like, yeah, I, I kind of want it to be 70 to 80 minutes and just the show. Maybe you start by showing the like clips from the episode of the one where the, with the wife, when you yeah, sure. her, that part, maybe you kind of have to see that, but I don't mind else. the, the iron side beginning. There's a Michael iron side. Uh, I like that a lot. Yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. That's fun. But I, I agree with you when we do like the, the backstage stuff it's not bad it just sort of i i think that there's a world in which somehow you just cut that out and made it like a really narrow yeah it just deflates it in a way and it's yeah. also like like those segments that are behind the scenes are black and white yeah. it's sort of yeah. you're breaking the kind of reality you were setting up with your own movie i they had to have made it a different film stock or show the crew or yes. something walking around but i would have preferred just like have those sections during the commercial breaks of the show maybe darken the set a little 
have him mm. still sitting there and you could figure out a way staff could come up and talk to him at the yeah. desk. I just feel like I agree with Chris that I, I, yeah, I wish it was just the late night talk show. Yes. I, I kind of, I, because you get the tension of both the filmmakers having to create that kind of, uh, uh, illusion but also in the story like you are stuck with this guy for in this yep. room for a while and that right. tension really does drive i think the best parts of this movie and i think don't even show the background what they should have done what uh, they should have made like uh fake commercials because what yeah. it is talking about is the marriage of like uh corporate america with yeah. satanic elements so like you have an element there to really you have right, a, right. a chance there to really have something that would be fun like old uh, the beginning of old companies that really became huge and parts of america there, there's stuff there and you know it, it works for what it is and david Dash dashmalian is fucking great he is uh, really great. Good. he's so uh, good so I, I don't i don't i don't want to complain too much but yeah that I, was I, i'm with you chris i don't want i don't want to complain too much i don't want to sound like the, detracting because I mean, and what's it's one of those things where like the steak is so good it's just like the mashed potatoes could have used a little more garlic kind of a thing just yes. because <laughs> yeah, that's the, yeah, the 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 way that they film the way that they block film and just experience the late night show is so perfect and it's like so like it's it, it's so 70s where it's like it's clearly like a Joe Franklin riff because he's not a comedian. He's just sort of like a guy that is, a, you know what I mean? Like he's yeah. competing with Carson, but it's not like because he's trying to be the funny guy. Like he, there's comedy in the show, but like he's more of just sort of like the host, which we had a lot of in like the 70s and 80s, kind of like going after Carson and Dash Malian because I, I've been following, we've been following him for a long time. Like this is a real great coming out party for him. I thought like, it, is, it was yeah. star making. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully. Um, you know, it's funny, like, yeah, I thought the same thing about, you know, the, the black and white stuff. It's weird because you can hear Michael Ironside kind of tee it up because he's like, here now is the raw tape from that episode with some special bonus features. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And in my head, I was like, all right, so mm. it's going to be found footage until it's not, you know what I mean? So like, it does become kind of formless like that, but then what's kind of funny too, and this isn't like a super spoiler or anything, but like the movie just explodes. The third act of this movie, the yes. final whatever, oh, yeah. 10 minutes of oh, this yeah. movie, is just a mind-fucking explosion. Chris, it reminded me of that movie that you and I both saw. You liked it a little better than I did, but The, the Outwaters, is that what it was called? Oh, yeah. Where it's Whoa. like, it is also like a found footage kind of thing, and then like the whole movie decides to just kind of like mutate into this other thing. And like, Late Night with the Devil does not go as far as that movie no. does, yeah. but um, I will say one of the things I kind of wanted more of and like, you know, I don't know, I'd watch uh, something that these the, the Karen's brothers here uh, who also directed 100 Bloody Acres, which I like. That was uh, that's really they good. did. A, they did a movie in 2016 called Scare Campaign, which I didn't see. But 100 Bloody Acres from 2012 is very funny, very gory. It's got uh, Dewey Crow from um, Justified, and, I believe. And Steve, your friend, Angus, uh, what's his name? Oh, the big uh, guy, Steve. Yeah, from. Um, from the uh oh, Fargo. The from Fargo. Oh, oh yeah. So my buddy Angus is it Angus McFadden? I don't know if it's what is it? No, no, not Angus McFadden. Angus Sampson, maybe. Oh, maybe. that sounds right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, the guy that I met in LA once and uh didn't do <laughs> we did karaoke on the same evening. We didn't do it together, but we did karaoke right, but, on the same um, evening. On the same evening, sure. Uh, I, uh, I, oh, the, oh, just to finish my thought, uh, the thing that I I was fascinated by, and Eric, this was a total fucking BIOS man thing. Some of the conspiracy stuff they get into. I don't want to say yes. which specific elements. I don't yes. want to spoil anything, but there's some conspiracy theory stuff that I was like, oh, because that shit has always that. seeing photos of that stuff has always like oh, yeah. terrified and fascinated me in equal breath. Uh, yeah, I, I will uh, just uh, to my wife's point, but I'll, I'll, I'm I'm crediting her. I, it's a really good full horror movie. Like it, it, it it's weird mm -hmm. that it's a TV movie. It's a movie about television, but. It like not folk horror doesn't have to just be you know the Wicker Man over and over and over again. Exactly, it, it's folk horror can and it, it's folk because it's like you know a lived experience that we all know, and then the horror comes into it. You know what I mean? Like it is yep. it it turns into that sort of and the sort of like lost tape kind of universe and like oh did you see that one night where it got totally crazy like and like that right. there is this sort of like uh, and I was reading a little bit about the Karens Brothers where like there was a danger in late night television at the time where like. It just happened, you know what I mean? No one ever expected mm -hmm. anything to get recorded. It was just sort of like, you know, we're just we're just getting through one night one night at a time, and anything really kind of sort of anything could happen. And that's what's really 
cool about that movie. Yeah. So yeah. even the title of the talk show, the fictional talk show in the movie is ties into some of that yeah. stuff. So yes. it's very cool. Oh, yes. Oh, I did not even fucking put that mm -hmm. together. You're totally See, that's right. the thing. Is, I yeah. feel like yeah. the more you watch it, I feel yes. like the better this is going to get. Yeah, I mean, I I really want to see it again. I mean, uh, you know, good Halloween watch, by the way. Obviously, it's yeah. gonna oh, it's sure. be a rotation. Yes, yeah. Great, yeah. Great, yeah. great end song as well. Mm -hmm. and, yep, uh, great end song. Absolutely, I actually like went and synced up that album uh, after after that came on. Yeah, uh, Das Machine's great. I like um, the guy, whoever this guy is playing the skeptic character. because yes, this is quite a performance. Yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, I want to get that dude's name because that was really great. Um, and the girl playing like the possessed child yeah. will continue to creep me out. Uh, the guy playing Carmichael is uh, an actor named Ian Bliss and uh, Ingrid Torelli plays uh, Lily, the Lily. possessed girl yeah. or whatever. Uh, but she was like, did you guys ever go to um, the Museum of the Moving Image and they have the like original like exorcist puppet and mm. like it's just mm. got that smile on its yeah. dead eyed face? <laughs> This girl replicates that IRL in this performance, and I like had to kind of look away from the television at times. <laughs> yeah. She was just freaking me the fuck out. This kind of like, no. yes, everything's totally fine. Yeah. I'm so happy to be here. Like, <laughs> yeah, she really hit it out of the park. The creepitude through the roof. Um, but the thing that I kept wondering about, and you know, yeah, we all watched it, but not together, right? Like, it, this must be really fun to watch with people. I was, like, yeah. sitting there with, yeah. with Marty, like, you're not appreciating this. You, don't, you, don't appreciate it. you know what I mean? Like, it just, it's also, because it's, like, it as eerie and whatever else it is, it's also very fun. I love all the shit with, like, the uh, the sidekick guy, the just kind of yeah. heavy yeah. potato-looking dude. He's really <laughs> fucking funny. Oh, his, his big moment, yeah. that's spectacular. Yeah, it's yeah. just great. Um, just really, really a lot to like. Um, yeah, I don't know. These dudes, I hope they do more stuff because this is great. And, you know, David, you know, he's there's no shortage of performances with this dude. So, yeah, I'm glad he's getting more movies where he's not like, you know, sixth well, banana. Like he's well, that's the stuff. thing is like he, of course, uh, took the chance. Everybody was knows. Oh, that's a face. I'm going to get that face. Yes, and like yeah, so he right. goes into Suicide Squad. He goes into Oppenheimer. But like uh, having known him from his early indie days, uh, uh, working with Joel Petrickus, uh, in Michigan, uh, the, the movie Relaxer, if you ever get a chance, is amazing with mm. him. In it. And he's like the second lead of it, essentially. Uh, it is incredible. And I, I'm just glad to see him back in the independent market. Cool. Uh, <laughs> someone sarcastically asks if it's better than Exorcist Believer. Almost anything is. Mm. Uh, uh, yes, it, it very much is. The thing uh, also with Das Malchin's performance, uh, he does have... And I don't want him to be relegated to something like this at all. Or though I don't know, maybe I do because he does get that uh, classical late night talk show host style down so perfectly. Yeah, yeah. His mannerisms, like yeah. what he's doing with his hands, how he interacts with the the band yeah. leader, announcer guy, like it's all so great. It's not yeah. someone like pretending to feel that, uh, pretending to do that. He feels like he has been doing night yes. owls for twenty years or whatever. Yeah. It's very um, lived in. Yes. Yeah, give him the Tonight Show. <laughs> I'd I'd watch it. I would finally watch it. Yes. <laughs> um. So yeah, in select theaters uh, Friday, but it's probably for most people going to be a Shutter experience on April the nineteenth. Um. So just about wrapping up here, but I I got to share this with you guys. Um. Stumbled on it last night, and it's like a quarter of a recommend. I want to tell you real quick about one secret movie. So at some point last year, there was a new movie from Philip Noyce called yeah. Fast Charlie that came out. Um, Clear and Present Danger, Patriot Games, okay. uh, among other things. Uh, this is Pierce Brosnan as a fixer. I don't know why he makes the argument in the movie that he's not a hitman. He's doing hitman shit in this movie. But mm. it's like he's a dude who goes on a hit with this one guy. And then it's like for reasons the operation goes tits up. And now it's one of those like everybody killed my team and now yeah. i have to get revenge kind of things um it's not awful there is some good like murdering around in it like sure. person is killing people left and right i which like is pretty great i like um, murder in movies 
-hmm. Yeah, no, it's uh, but here's here's where you really have to sort of, I guess, um, what I'm trying to say, like suspend disbelief because this movie takes place um, in uh, like Alabama mm -hmm. and Pierce Brosnan. Oh, no. Well, he's don't, trying to do no, something. Don't. No. He's trying no. to do something. No. That's and bad. It, Just you be you. Thought, you thought his voice, uh, that accent was bad nomads, whatever he's trying to do in that movie way back. Four yeah, years yeah. Ago. French voice, yeah. Uh, holy shit, this voice. <laughs> it's like a Cajun guy here? He's trying to do like a Mississippi Delta. It's Mississippi, oh. sorry, it's not Alabama. He's no. trying to do like Mississippi Delta something or other. That's crazy. Uh, and it's like, you know, not everybody else in the movie's doing it. Like um, Marina Bakarin, who was in like the remake of V, and she's been yeah. on a bunch of TV. She was in um, she's a Deadpool Homeland. Movie, oh yeah, she yeah, yeah. she's uh, Deadpool's oh, okay. uh, lady friend. Yep. She's like the the love interest in this because she's like the ex girlfriend of a guy uh -huh. that he murders, and that guy was abusive. So of course they're gonna fall in love. She's also trying to do something. It doesn't work, but then. Yeah. You've got people like James Caan, which Ooh. has got to be like one of his final performances. And like Toby Huss is in this movie. They're not doing anything. They're just talking like they talk, you know? So like mm -hmm. Pierce, it's just noticeable every fucking... And the guy's talking in like every scene. And that accent, it's a tornado of trouble. It's really oh, something. God. Don't um, even try. No, mm. it's, it's, you know, just whatever. Don't. Yeah, it doesn't like, work. It could just be like Bob the Englishman, Charlie yeah. the Englishman, you know? Yeah, yeah. Or even just do your regular flat American one, and it's just like, hi, everybody, it's me, I'm American. Yeah. It, that would at least be a little better, yeah. yeah. I will say, though, speaking of James Caan, like, why did he have to be in this movie? Unless, like, he just really wanted to. Like, he's so frail. Yeah, he doesn't, that's hard to watch. He doesn't, like, get out of a wheelchair the whole time. Yeah. Like, it's... It's really, really sad. You know, it's like, probably one of those things where it's like, this will cover the funeral. You know? <laughs> I mean, uh, honestly, dude, yeah. I was having those thoughts because you're watching him in this movie and like, he sounds very weak. Like, he sounds like James Conn. Like, it's his accent and everything. He's not trying to put on a voice, but like, he's just so frail. And you're mm. like, did he yeah. die like on the way home from the rap party? <sighs> I mean, like, oh, by the way, people in the chat, we know he's Irish, but he was very famous for playing an English character. Yeah. Right? Yes. That's, that's is that right. fair to say? That's that's yeah, oh, yeah we're we're aware um but so yeah not like a recommend by any means it's just it's a secret movie that you could do worse uh mm. i would say so not a i guess not a glowing recommendation but i was just was like oh yeah like patriot games mm -hmm. you know clear and present danger like there's a record here um it sounds like the foreigner uh, is a better secret pierce brosnan movie mm. the one where he's shoving jackie chan down a staircase and shit <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah yeah and I think he's oh, an yeah. evil Irishman in that too. So you yes. can, you, you can yeah. really go. There on you that. go. Yeah. There. Yes. Um, so yeah, there you go. Little secret movie for everybody, but, but that's going to wrap up this week, everybody. Uh, but we have a whole slew of stuff to tell you about stuff that has been released and is about to be released. If you're playing catch up from last week, of course, rebel moon is out. Mm -hmm. uh, watch along or not. Either way is fine. Cause that movie is terrible. The uh, trailer uh, for the new one is apparently going to be released sometime today. I don't know uh, when, today, oh, but uh -huh. the second part uh the rape threat infinitum is going to be released <laughs> uh, sometime today. I do not know when. Uh, by the way, that reminds me because I believe that streaming date is 419. So if you're looking for stuff to stream on the 19th of April, <laughs> yeah. do Late Night with the Devil. Yes, please do that. <laughs> yeah. Please do yourself a favor. Uh, also, last week we did drop uh, the March edition of Melrose 210. Wild shit happening mm. uh, on both of those episodes of television. Uh, and then also we did start the free version of something I will tell you about in a second here. But to go and release order, the big week ahead of us, folks. Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Listener of Month continues with a conversation about the Rollerball remake. Mm -hmm. uh, good, you know, sometimes some of the dumbest movies make for the best episodes. Hey, Eric, Eric, Andrew, uh, uh, all, of, all of you, really, have you ever considered that maybe we should have done all of this in night vision? Mm. <laughs> like, I thought we should, like, yeah. yeah. Maybe just reverse it so we're all in green. I mean, it was St. Patty's yep. Day yesterday. Next, right. next week we'll do night vision entirely. Okay. Yes, that's, that's definitely. A good idea. We should definitely okay. do that. 
Uh, but that's out uh, on the We Hate Movies feed, which you can get that commercial free, of course, on our Patreon at the $8 level and up. But we got a packed week of shows here. Check this out. So that's just Tuesday. Wednesday, we're talking Savage Press on the Glee Woo! Glossary, Darth Maul's loser brother. Yes, <laughs> it is a fun. It's a fun one, folks. I had to write the entry myself, so <laughs> I still can't pronounce it, but I, I had to write it. Uh, very excited to tease this, Eric. A, a little bit of a, of a soundboard return, just a little. Oh bit. yeah, a little bit. You have to see what little, it is. A little bit. Uh, it's something I was thinking about earlier this morning and chuckling to myself about it. I think it's very funny. Uh, so that's going on. And then, holy moly, Thursday, Animation Damnation. We're talking Brave Star. Brave Star. Mm -hmm. uh, and you will hear us really try to remember whether or not we did an episode uh, on that cartoon before. Uh, spoiler alert, we had not. But it is a fun conversation. I actually just edited it. Edited it, edited it mm -hmm. this morning. This morning, yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. this morning, 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 morning. morning. <laughs> uh, but then Friday, folks, we are super excited because getting underway in earnest, the first series of Too Old for This Shit drops on the Patreon only at the top tier level. This is us talking all about the first season of X Men '97, and Friday's episode will have us talking about the first two episodes, which are dropping this Thursday. Very exciting stuff. I'm really excited. I'm excited to just watch it, honestly, and then be able to talk to you folks about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's going to be great. We had a lot of fun, by the way, uh, on last week's Too Old for This Shit, that preview episode. We talked about uh, uh, Night of the Sentinels, the pilot episode of the X Men '92 series. That's also on the free feed right now. So if you're like, oh, what's uh, what's Too Old for This Shit going to be about? Have a gander at that, and then tune in this Friday for an all-new episode. Uh, now, to take us out, we're going to tease something. Listener request month in just a couple more episodes is going to be over with. Mm -hmm. So we had to come up with something for April, you guys. Uh, so I'm going to tease it right now, just really quickly, uh, with the cover art for the theme of, uh, well, next month's theme month, the April programming for We Hate Movies. Let me mm -hmm. get that art up here oh no i oh geez no <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, oh, oh shit you oh. still got this set i love it you got it set to daddy still <laughs> <laughs> Philippe, <laughs> you have outdone yourself you my un god bleep undaddy this und undaddy it uh no so we will say this next week on uh on screen live we're going to tell you exactly what's going on with the month of april but here is a oh. teaser oh. of philippe's artwork yeah. uh Who it's can a really it amazing out? piece can you figure it out in time for next week's episode or whenever we shit <laughs> two weeks <laughs> We'll no, we're see. gonna we're, we're gonna tell people next week about it. okay yeah, yeah, yeah. next yeah. week you got a week <laughs> to try to figure out what this is going to be Oh, yeah, I'm seeing it right. in the chat already. Yes, you, you are correct. We are doing movies based on Bernard Shaw plays. That's true. <laughs> it's yes, Shawland is what it says. Uh, there. Yes, 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 you're, yes, you're correct. Shawland. Uh, let me see. Yeah. Oh, who's who's making some bad guesses? Yeah. No, you're not going to guess it, folks. Don't worry about that. No. Uh, but we're very excited to tell you about that next week, where we're also going to be talking about Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire in some fashion or other. So. Oh, uh, yeah. God damn. Good God damn. Uh, but anyway, folks, have a great week. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to this channel. Until next time on On Screen Live, I've been Andrew Jupin. Steven Tata. Eric Siska. Chris Cabin. Adios. Bye-bye. <laughs>